Welcome everyone to show 12 of the 24 hour global commute. Over this 24 hours, we will visit every time zone on the planet. And we have some amazing guests lined up. I am Luis Rosa and my co-host is the multi-talented Kate Holmes. Hi, Kate. Hola, Luis. Como estas? Muy bien. Gracias. <laughs> It is awesome to have you here and kind of funny, you're actually just down the road about 10 minutes here in Las Vegas, but go figure it would take a global commute to bring us together. Absolutely. That is uh, very funny. And I haven't seen you in person in a while, but thank God for Zoom, right? Yes. Well, it's got its, you know, ups and downs, but yes, thank goodness we can do amazing things like this. Without a doubt. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I am excited to be here. Along the way, this charity event will raise money for Quad A, which is the Association of African American Financial Advisors, and also Color for Change for Black Lives Matter here in the United States. And the team in the UK will be raising money for two great charities in CF Warriors, which helps kids overcome cystic fibrosis, and the Stroke Association. But we would also like to encourage people in other countries to donate to a charity of your choice, and then message us, let us know that we can add your donation to our total and show what the financial planning community can do when it comes together. We will have more about all of that later on the show, but Kate, what do we have coming up? Well, I just wanted to take a moment to point out this is show 12 of the 24 hour global commute. So we're about 12 hours in. And I just wanted to give a super special shout out to Adam Owen, who is working on everything behind the scenes. He is organizing over 60 guests from every time zone, last minute changes. He's written scripts for everything. He's making all of it happen. So a tremendous shout out to Adam. Thank you for putting this together, for being the brainchild behind this. and and bring us all together for such an amazing cause. And on this show, we've got an interview with Lauren Williams, who's a CFP professional and four-time Olympian and the first American woman to medal in both the Summer and Winter Olympics. And it kind of feels like a fun little reunion from CFP Board's Diversity Summit last November. Uh, Luis, you and Lauren both spoke at that. So that's the last time the three of us were together. So really appreciate being able to represent, you know, geographic, racial, and gender diversity on this show as we're really becoming a reflection of what the world looks like. So it's super important to have those providing financial services reflect the rest of our communities around the world. We've also got a specially extended show here on this one with Dominique Colenso, who's back with more tips on how to present online with impact. But first, we are going to get the news with CityWire RIA. And on this show, it's brought to us by Alex Rosenberg. Hey, Alex. Hey, Kate. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the toss there. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a news roundup, three stories that, that are perhaps interesting to, to advisors and others in the financial planning community. One is that Credit Suisse is delisting the TVIX ETN, that's T-V-I-X. Um, this was a uh, double long VIX product. So if you think the uh, VIX is going higher, if it rises 10% in one day, this uh, exchange traded note returns 20%. Now this year, we all know that the that volatility has risen substantially. So it's now very, a very large product. It's gotten up to a billion dollars and it's risen 200% this year, making it, uh, and now that it's being delisted, it's going to be the largest uh, delisted ex exchange traded product ever. Also the first time that the number one exchange traded product was delisted. So uh, interesting move by Credit Suisse there and the delisting will be effective July 12th. Meanwhile, uh, Fauci not throwing a flag. So Anthony Fauci, clearing up something in an interview with Bloomberg. So Fauci had been giving some comments about what the NFL will need to play uh, football this season. Uh, and Trump tweeted on Friday, quote, informed Dr. Fauci this morning that he has nothing to do with NFL football. Fauci uh, rather agreeing in an interview with Bloomberg today saying, quote, I haven't set any strict conditions or other directions for the football league. They're a very competent group of people and they'll make up their own minds. And he added, it's unfortunate that it's been somehow spun that I'm the person in the way of a football season, which you know, no one really wants to be that, that one guy standing between America and its, uh, its football. Meanwhile, uh, finally, in higher education news, Princeton joining its Ivy League school counterparts in no longer requiring the SAT or ACT for applications. So that means all eight Ivy League schools are no longer requiring standardized testing, which 
you know, could be good news for high school students who don't like filling in those little bubbles with that number two pencil. Um, but it's actually also a reaction to what's going on now with COVID and, and making it more difficult for people to sit for tests and also uh, longstanding talk about standardized testing, perhaps uh, stopping some students from attending Ivy League colleges. So with that, that's the news I got. Kate, uh, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Alex. And it will be super interesting to see what does happen with football. Uh, you know, we've got the brand new Raiders Stadium here in Las Vegas. Everyone is super excited. They sold out all the seats. It's become Raider Nation here in Vegas. And my husband is a massive football fan. So uh, we might need a few more of those well-being wellness tips if we end up going a season without football. It'll be a stressful time in our household. <laughs> so I appreciate that, Alex. We'll keep an eye on it. So Luis, what do we have next in the show? Thanks, Kate. I'm really excited to be introducing our next guest. We met at the CFP Board Diversity Summit and she gave an amazing speech. It was a, a speech that everybody uh, got off their feet and it just stand innovation all around. So Without further ado, it is my honor to introduce Lauren, we Lauren Williams. Hi, Lauren. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Likewise. Thank you for being <laughs> here with us. It is good to be seen and to be here. Awesome. Well, let's dive right in. Um, I know that your CV differs quite a f from quite a few of our guests. So talk us through your story from the beginning to right now, as much as you can concise it for us. All right, <laughs> 30 years of life in five seconds or less. <laughs> I'm a sprinter, I can totally do that. Um, so yeah, I'm raised between Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and Detroit, Michigan. Um, big family, not a lot of financial literacy. And that's relevant because I got to the University of Miami uh, on a track and field scholarship and it was the best opportunity of my life. I did not know how I was going to go to college otherwise. Um, I was probably going to get some academic monies, but probably would have been in a situation where I would have taken on student loans. I was so grateful to my coach for the opportunity to get a free education that I worked my butt off on the track uh, to be, you know, the best athlete I could be for her. Well, that ended up, you know, paying dividends that I never knew were coming. And I made the 2004 Olympic team. Uh, so immediately I had to turn my focus from being a junior in college to being a financial professional. And being a financial professional, well, not being a financial professional, but being a grown up more so than, than a financial right. professional just yet. Um, and so I knew that I didn't know a lot about finances, even though I was a finance major, but I needed to kind of figure out how to best organize my finances. Well, I didn't end up in the hands of someone that really understood how to help a young professional or what the intricacies are, were for an athlete. So it didn't go well with that first person. I hired a second person that didn't go better. Um, and I was kind of like, what, what is everyone else doing with their money? Like, what do you do when you have questions? What do you, ha what do, you do when you need advice? And at, literally a Google search led me to becoming a certified financial planner. So uh, that's kind of how I got here, the, the long story short of it. <laughs> so it looks like your attention came first from your own personal experience and, and just having dealt with one or two advisors that just couldn't click with you and, and make you go in the right direction that you thought you should. Exactly. Yeah. Was, there was a gap in what I felt like I needed versus what was being offered in the industry. And I decided to start a company to, to fill that gap for myself and others. Got it. Well, speaking of your company, it's a perfect time. And let's just dive in a little <laughs> bit into what Worth Winning is and uh, tell us about the podcast as well. Yeah. So Worth Winning is a financial planning firm that serves clients on a fee only basis, which means we charge a flat fee. We don't earn any commissions for selling any investment products or insurance products. So that gets rid of the conflict of interest uh, that some people, that makes people worry sometimes when they're hiring a financial advisor. And we focus specifically on people in their 20s and 30s. Uh, so I really love being able to help young professionals kind of accumulate assets and understand their financial picture and, you know, sort through the things that we're up against. You know, we're buying our first home, we're getting married, we're trying to figure out how to talk to our spouse about money. Um, you know, we're dealing with like humongous student loans and trying to figure out like, how do I pay this debt and buy the house and, you know, do all these different things. So um, I really enjoy that aspect of financial planning because those are the things that I've, you know, gone through myself as a young professional trying to get myself on the right track financially. Yeah, and it's amazing how you mentioned everything that a young professional might go through and assets under management is just one aspect of that, but mm -hmm. it's probably not the main focus. So 
I love how you have your website. It's, it's just amazing. It's so clean, so elegant and simple at the same time. And it's very clear who you serve. So what would you say to other advisors who are more generalists at the moment and they haven't found like their niche or niche, depending who you ask? I say niche. <laughs> Do you say niche? You say niche. I'm a niche that, that person be... too. I'm a niche person. Yeah. <laughs> what would your advice be to somebody who's more of a generalist right now to, to find their, their true calling? I would say that the biggest thing is don't be afraid to serve someone really well um, instead of trying to serve everyone. I think the big thing with generalists is like, I, I need clients. You know, when you're a new <laughs> professional, you're like, I need people to come in. I need income to come in. Uh, so I serve everybody. I'll figure out how to make it work for you. Um, and you'll find very quickly that that doesn't work very well. Um, in fact, it goes a lot further in order to be able to say, okay, I, I know these people like the back of my hand. I know all the intricacies of, you know, the things that you're up against. And therefore, like, this is my market. And to, and to be able to say, like, you know, because you're not my market, I know someone else who is. Like, you know, know other people in those niches. And it, it works a lot better for us to be able to work together when you say, like, if you got a lawyer, call Lauren. If you got an athlete, call Lauren. Uh, if it is someone that is first generation wealth builder, call Rianca. You know, like you got these people and you just kind of go. Um, and it, it makes it a lot better and the client gets better service. And that's what we're really trying to do as we build the industry is uh, make sure that people have strong financial resources that they can go to and that they can depend on. Yeah, and you bring up a great point. I feel like other industries already do it. Uh, you don't go to a generalist lawyer for the most part. They specialize in something, divorce, mm -hmm. real estate things of that sort, even doctors, right? Sometimes you have your general doctor, but typically they will refer you out to somebody else who then specifies. You don't go to a foot doctor for a heart problem and so on. So I'm glad that you mentioned that because I feel like our industry is probably headed that way. And it's something that young advisors should take into account. You don't need to know it all. It's completely fine to focus on one area and just have a good network of other advisors that you can refer business to, right? And back and forth, which is great. So Lauren, I can't let you go without <laughs> telling us about your career in the Olympics. I did a little Google search and I saw that you had visited my home country of Dominican Republic during your Olympic career. So please tell us about your experiences at both the summer and the winter Olympics and what the driving forces were for your success. Yeah, so I did visit your home country uh, very early on. That's kind of where it all got started for me. <laughs> um, I ran really well in the Dominican Republic. I actually became a Pan American champion mm -hmm. um, and got invited to be on my first world team specifically because of that performance. So uh, it is very near and dear to my heart. Awesome. Um, over the course of years, I've managed to go to four Olympic Games. Uh, so 2004, 2008, 2012, and 2014. Um, I earned two silver medals and one gold medal. Um, and I think the thing that like was most enjoyable for me was traveling all over the world. So uh, I actually did a count this year because a friend of mine has a, a cool app that allows you to count up. And I've been to 48 different countries. And wow. the majority of them were because of track and field or bobsled and just getting to travel in order to be able to, you know, do my sport, do what I love, make a living, but also see the world. And so it's just been a really, really fun ride to be able to participate in sport, to be able to give back to athletes in a way that I felt like I was not serviced during the time I was in sport. Um, and just to see like everything evolving and, and you know, this idea of being becoming one. Right, absolutely. Well, we have to get you back into the Dominican Republic, hopefully next time, just to relax by the beach, sip right. some coconuts, right? <laughs> yes, I, I, I see a financial planning conference being born. Yes. Um, with you as the host. <laughs> Sign me up, I, I'm all in. So let me ask you, what did you learn from your career in athletics that you feel still influences to you today, uh, even your career or even in your personal life? I would say the number one thing I learned would be the idea of perseverance. Um, so it's a cliche term that gets thrown around quite a bit, but it's this idea that, you know, when you get kicked in the face, uh, you got to show up the next day. You lose a race, uh, you, you've got to show up the next day. Um, you stink at practice. You, you still show up because what you're doing by continuing to show up is, is building character, but also building discipline. Um, and you're actually growing. You're, you're putting a foundation in place to be able to succeed at whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. So the idea of persevering through the various obstacles that I um, bumped up against while I was competing in sport, I've definitely carried that over into life after sport. And he said, sometimes a client says they don't want to be one. You thought like, man, this is a great client. We, we clicked. It was so good. And yeah. 
<laughs> they ghost you. Um, you got to show up anyway. You don't shut your business down because of that. Um, you got to keep going. Even like I'm in the midst of being audited. I'm like, oh, this is such a headache. I cannot believe like, you know, and then you're like, well, I got to get more organized and got to keep on going because I know I'm doing a really good job for my clients and it's all going to be worth it. Like having to upload all these documents. So I'd say perseverance would be a really key thing um, that you can take from sport and you can transition into any kind of life after sport project that you're working on. That is awesome. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I also wanted to ask you with the protests going on, sweeping the globe right now, Black Lives Matter, uh, what is your current take on the state of affairs? And in your opinion, what are the steps that you can take to improve society? Uh, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure <laughs> at all. Can you fix the whole world, Lauren, in, in just 30 seconds or yeah, less? Yeah, 30 seconds, please. <laughs> um, I would say the biggest thing we need to be focusing on right now is compassion and uh, really thinking about the perspective of others. I think where we have not done a good job to date and where people are really struggling despite the conversation now being had more than it has ever been um, and on a broader scale than it's ever been is really trying to hear and understand someone else's perspective. Uh, what has someone gone through? What have they experienced? You know, what, what do you not know or see on a regular basis? You know, we always say don't judge a book by its cover. A mm -hmm. lot of judging a book by its cover is what's happening right now. You know, I didn't experience that. I never did that to anyone. I didn't da 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 da, -da uh, fill in the blank when it's, you know, it's, it's not about you and what your experience has been. It's about finding out what others experience has been so that you can have um, perspective and you can see, you know, from a wider lens because experience is the thing that is gonna bring us all together. It's understanding that everybody has different experiences there's a big global world out there. There's all kinds of different cultures, um, all kinds of different levels of earnings. You know, we can just go on and on with how unique people are, but it starts with you deciding to open the book and look beyond the cover and really go deeper into, you know, who are, who are the people in my circle? Who are the people around me? And, and what have they experienced up to this point? And how can I help them, you know, have better experiences going forward? All right, so having an open mind and, and the compassion when people differ from your own thoughts and experiences. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. What does, the future, uh, <laughs> what does the future hold for you? What are your goals? What do you see yourself say five, 10 years? What does the future hold for me? So I am per perplexed by that question daily and it's, it's ever evolving. You know, at the beginning of the year, I would have gave you one answer. March, I would have given you another. And today I'm probably going to give you a third. So um, <laughs> if I had to say today, uh, the thing I'm really focused on is, you know, making financial planning ac accessible to uh, the multitudes. And so I launched a course this year to make it a, a little bit more accessible, but I don't ever want to lose the one-on-one -on -one aspect of financial planning, the relationship aspect of it. Uh, people being able to get access to customized advice because you know that course sometimes don't resonate. Yes, they need to get some basic literacy under their belt, but people want to know like what's happening with my financial situation. How does this apply to me specifically? Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to, on a broader scale, make sure that people have access to customized financial planning. Um, in five to 10 years, what does that look like? I don't know that I want to run a humongous firm, but I think that my calling is very much to share as much as possible to encourage and motivate people to take control of their finances, to take action on the things that they can control because sometimes people feel helpless. They're in a place of paralysis because of whatever they've um, experienced from a financial standpoint. They feel like there's a, they're, a, they're in a hole they can't dig themselves out of. Um, and it's not necessarily earnings that's holding people back at this point. It's lack of literacy. It's lack of resources to figure out like how to move forward. And I think um, me being able to spread that message and create a platform that's going to sp spread a message that's going to encourage others to be more financially organized and be more confident um, to take control and take action as, as opposed to sticking where they are with their finances is, is what I'm working on. Got it. That is awesome. That's a great vision. So we have to figure out a way to multiply learn, right? So that exactly. The just need to there. clone myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lauren. This has been amazing. Thank you for being here, sharing your story with us. It was very impactful. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you soon in person. Kate, who do we have next? Thanks, Luis, and thanks, Lauren. And I am totally on board for getting this conference going in the Dominican Republic. So whatever we need to do to start piecing that together, let's let's make that happen. Luis, the world you and I first actually has to open up. <laughs> well, you know, but there's some planning. I mean, we can we can start have something good to look forward to. 
And Lauren, thank you so much for being here, for sharing your story. Um, you have an amazing story and you have so much more to share. And for those that want to learn more, of course, follow Lauren on social media. And she was also an amazing guest on episode 13 of the Innovating Advice podcast. Uh, so you can check it out there. So as Luis mentioned earlier, we're doing a charity challenge through a lot of this, trying to raise money for great organizations around the world. So let's go over to the UK and check in with the amazing financial planners that are taking this day out of their schedule to do these charity challenges to raise money. So let's start with Clem. And can you uh, share with us how the Minecrafting challenge is going? And for those just tuning in, what you guys are building? Yeah, so I'm going to try and share my screen this time, so I'm not just talking about what's going on. Um, so this is, uh, we're building the venue for this year's conference. Um, I don't know if, uh, can you see, actually? Yeah. <laughs> just talking yeah. great. So this is the venue, how it looks like inside now. So we have, a, this, this is it. So we have capacity for 200 people and um, there's a next-gen logo at the back. And uh, I've been just currently looking at um, trying to make this sort of the, the green room where you can have a rest, you know, <laughs> to calm your nerves uh, and uh, before before the big show. And we've also taken on your idea, um, Kate, to make a bar, uh, which I'm going to walk towards now. And Alistair has made, did, a, did a quite a good job. So he did a sign here to make sure that we're going to the bar. And um, yes. just to show you that we have, we have a bar with draft beer and, and everything so and little seats so you can look out onto the desert or um the forest whatever you fancy so yeah that's that's that that's it for now we might embellish it a little bit but the venue is, is pretty much there now <laughs> Oh, how cool is that? And I am honored that you guys have put a bar up there. I just, look, it's a, to me a great way of being able to network with people when you're at a conference, even if you're virtual. So there are um, three of you, correct, that are doing this 24-hour Minecraft challenge? Yeah, so it's uh, Alistair, myself, and my boyfriend, Milo, who's not a financial planner. He's a uh, he does a personal injury litigation. He's, uh, he works in law, um, but yeah, he likes playing computer games. And so we just thought we'd do it all together. Yeah. So, and it, it might be used. I mean, as things continue to stay virtual and we look and have no idea when in-person conferences are going to open up, uh, you've got the next gen conference happening virtual for the rest of this week. And you guys are building it because maybe in the future, uh, the conference will continue to be virtual. I would hope not. I miss everyone very dearly. <laughs> We're all hoping for a big bash, which is going to happen once quarantine's over. <laughs> yes, I, uh, we're, we're all aching for it. Absolutely. So let's pop over to Gretchen, who has been doing various super creative challenges, uh, crafting <laughs> challenges for 24 hours straight. Yeah, well, not not quite yet, but yes, that's the plan. Um, so, uh, yeah, I um, I finished the B for Betsy, which was my is my niece. She's going to be one. So here we go. Love it. I don't know if you can see it. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased that actually because it probably cost me loads, wouldn't it, to buy it? So I'm and um, I'm taking off all these gifts that I'm making today. Um, so I'm really pleased about that. And um, one of the things I really wanted to do, um, I guess, when I talked to um, Adam about this was just sort of show multi-discipline um, craft. So that's kind of where I'm at with everything I'm doing. I'm trying to, I've done quite a few bits of painting ones, haven't I? But I'm trying to show different things. So I'm going to get my sewing machine out next and I'm going to make um, like some little lavender bags. The lavender is from my mum's garden and um, I'm going to sew up. Uh, very simply, little bags to put lavender in for you. Keep your drawers all nice. Um, so I'm going to do that next. Fantastic. And a lot of these are actually great ideas. As everyone's at home, their kids are still at home trying to find ways to keep their kids busy. You've got a lot of great things that people can do pretty easily. Do you have those uh, awesome popsicle sticks nearby yeah. that you can show? Yeah. Those are from a couple of hours ago, but I just think they're super fun. Yeah, so um, 
And also I should explain where I'm in like my garden, but I've got a studio in my garden that I had built last year, which I am an odd about whether I should spend the money, honestly, like the best thing I've ever, ever, ever spent money on, especially when you end up in lockdown for three months. Um, but yeah, so here's, uh, there's the horse and the chicken. Um, he's a little, there's the pig and that one's a cat. I think he he was meant to be kind of a cow, but he also looks a bit like a dog. So who who knows? But yeah, they were really cute. I really like those. I think maybe I'll try more of those at some point. Different, different. Yeah, you, you've got a whole farm going. There's a farm there, isn't there? But you could yeah. do like um, a safari, couldn't you? You could have like a lion and a tiger and do those ones. Oh yeah, do do so. the big four. Yeah. <laughs> unlike unlike my other one when Jackson said that he wanted me to um, make a squid so there we go yeah that was another couple of hours ago you will understand what I was talking about there <laughs> um but yeah it's great I'm really enjoying it it's great to see everyone and um yeah let's uh keep going everyone and keep pledging your money yes Yes, indeed. Let's go over to Jess. But first, I have to say, Jess, you did actually inspire me. And we ended the last show right on time. So I ran 10 flights of stairs in my house going back and forth. And I was like, uh oh, it took you like 120 stairs to get as out of breath as I was after those 10. But how's it going now? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I'm great you're inspired. Everyone get on your stairs <laughs> in the next break. Um, yeah, my body is starting to... Um, fail. <laughs> so my hips are killing me. And um, the soles of my feet also, I'm starting to get carpet burn, which I didn't anticipate getting. Uh, but I am 350 out of 587 now. So I'm well yeah. over halfway. And yes, hopefully it won't take too much longer. <laughs> so are you going barefoot? I am, but I might have to go and find some socks because it's really uncomfortable now. Yeah, you, otherwise you might not be walking for a few days, but it'll be interesting to see actually you should have walk anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. You should have taken a, a picture of the stairs before and after to see if you can see like obvious wear and tear, but you might want to add some shoes to those socks for a little more comfort and cushion. Yes, I agree. I think I might have to go put some slippers on. <laughs> yes. Well, do that. Make sure you're eating because you're burning a lot there, staying hydrated. Yeah, my boyfriend just rang me. He's bringing fish and chips. So, <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, that sounds perfect. Awesome, Jess. We'll check back in with you in the next episode. Thank and you. we will pop over to Steve, who will remind us again to dig deep as he is <laughs> <laughs> torturing himself. Yeah, properly torturing. Now, I've got... Uh, five miles left, I think, which uh, wow. feels like an absolute eternity. Um, where are we up to? 3,624 calories consumed. We are managing about 50 RPM at the moment. So if any of you knows anything about that, that's pretty woeful. Um, but just got to keep doing what we can do. I honestly don't think my legs have ever hurt so much in all of my life. Um, so when there is the general collective who are going to be inspired to climb stairs, I politely request to be excluded from that gang. I will not be going up any down or down any stairs, probably for about a week, I think. Um, but yeah, nearly done. Nearly, nearly done. And I'm going to lie down probably for a week. So if anybody's on tomorrow's course, apologies in advance for how lame I'm going to be. But Damien's a legend and he'll look after you. So this is why we do two-person activities. Um, oh, that's cool. I didn't yep. see there's just yep. had another donations coming in. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the suffering is real, people. Um, I do appreciate if I had trained properly like I was doing six week, weeks in advance, this would have been a different experience, but still, um, we will get there. Four and a half miles to go, okay? If you want to do the last four and a half miles for me, that would be epic. 
I would be happy to, but uh, I, you've done so well. I think you got to carry it out. And since you're going to be wrapping up soon, uh, let's have you do one last call for people to dig deep in those pockets and keep those donations coming in. Just had a great one that came through. Fantastic. Yeah, so just over four miles, which at the snail's pace that I'm going at the moment, probably 10 or 12 minutes. And... Uh, if we don't do it fairly sharply on the time that I'm finished, I need to send one of the kids to subby in for me because I'll be lying down and not getting back up again. <laughs> awesome. Well, Steve, you've done absolutely incredible. I hope you keep your energy up. I'm not actually sure how you're even going to go to the pool after this with your son. You might, <laughs> just, you, you might just fall off that bike and lay there for a day or two. That might be, might be what I would I'm gonna, do, but I'm gonna super inspirational. The end. It, I'm going to stay at the shallow end, that's for sure. Um, could do without draining that wouldn't be very helpful for anything so um but yeah thanks guys it's been nice to chat to you on the way through you're all doing amazing stuff well as are you thanks for encouraging people to dig deep thanks for raising incredible money for the stroke association and cf warriors and as we said earlier we're trying to raise as much money as possible we've got links to those two uk charities in the show notes um, and then in the chat box, you can donate directly to Quad A, the Association of African American Financial Advisors, or Color of Change, or any other charity that um, suits you, that has a personal meaning for you, your family, or your clients even. And then let us know, because I'm getting messages on Twitter, lots of people wanting to do good throughout this. So thank you to everyone that's supporting, and Steve for motivating all of us. If it wasn't uh, 110 degrees here, about 42 Celsius today, then I'd be, I'd be going out for a bike ride, but. That's why I'm indoors with the aircon on. It's about 30 something Celsius outside here. So um, yeah, the aircon's a bit more helpful. Though. Well, fantastic. Have a great last couple of miles. You are so, so close. Maybe put on a little more uh, fat boy slim just to get you over that finish line. <laughs> I might do my final cheerio to you with fat boy slim in the background. Although I have to be careful which one, otherwise it, we might get in bother. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for doing that, Steve. Thanks for checking in and take care of yourself for the rest of the day and the week. And you guys. So to round up our show today, we welcome back Dominique Colenso with a presentation focus. So take it away, Dominique. Thank you, Kate. Uh, hi, everyone. It's uh, it's really great to uh, be here with you again. Um, I feel really inadequate, I have to say. I'm just standing in my office right now, having seen all of that effort um, and uh, an impact. Uh, I'm taking my hat off virtually uh, to everyone who's raising money today. Uh, I was talking in the last session that we, we were running around the difference between Tesla and Porsche. In this session, I'd like to draw your attention to the difference between being an expert and a performer and if you think about it in your career um, you are conditioned to uh, to become this amazing expert you 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 go and you do your exams and your education and you're encouraged in a work context to really kind of get under the the, the detail um, to engage with the team to uh, listen to be you know a, a real team player and then all of a sudden what happens is you put your head above the parapet and you need to perform. Suddenly, just being that expert isn't good enough. You've actually got to be out there and be visible and be the face of the brand, especially you know, if you're running your own firm, if you're a, an owner manager, then all of the hard work that you did to get you where you are isn't enough to get you to where you want to be. And I think it was quite interesting. You know, Lauren alluded to that, that the, the, the tools that get you there don't necessarily keep you there. So there's something about the kind of persistence that is really important in creating an impact. You've got to be able to step outside of your comfort zone. And over the last couple of years, I've been working with lots of people in the financial planning industry, um, within the kind of tech and finance industries in general. And I see a real trend there of people that are absolutely on point. They know their stuff inside out. But one of their biggest challenges is to be able to actually communicate that 
with other people. Uh, and I think one of the key things that you need to think about is your presence. Like literally, how do you show up? What impression do you leave behind? Now, uh, I'm just going to give a, another kind of hat tip to, to Kate here, who has been uh, on screen for hours and hours and hours. And yet she is showing up every single episode with real charm, with real presence and, and lighting up our screens. Um, and I'm sure in the back of her mind, she'd just like to be lying on the couch with a cup of coffee or a glass of wine right now. But she's not. She's doing something different. And what she's doing is she is taking, she's taking up space. Yeah, she's, she's making sure that she's engaging with you as an audience. Come, it's, it's what, 20, uh, 20.04, so it's five past eight in the UK where I am right now. Um, it would be really easy for me to be doing this session a little bit like this. I, yeah, hi everyone. Um, you know, nice to be here. But, but actually, there's something about the way that you energize yourself that is really, really important. So wherever you are in the world right now, and, and some of you, this will be the morning commute. Um, let's hope, like, if you're driving, don't do this. But if you're not driving, do this. I want you just to have a bit of a stretch. Come on, everybody. Just have a little bit of a, a move. Give the shoulders a little bit of a roll. Now, if, uh, if you've got any injuries, then obviously, you know, take care of your body. But just notice what happens when you start to get the blood pumping around the system a little bit, what happens to the energy levels that you start to, uh, to, to uh, develop? And, and for me, this is about what I call level eight energy. So if you imagine a scale of one to 10, Level one is like man flu. I can't get out of bed. I've got no energy. I just want to lie here. Uh, maybe like Steve will be feeling in about three or four minutes time when he finishes his, his cycle, you know, just, just collapsed. Level 10 is your kind of uh, two cans of Red Bull packet of M&Ms, you know, like slightly wired, a little bit too much, a little bit in your face. Now, when we're creating an impact, when we're talking to clients, whether we're showing up on Zoom or let's even think about when we're communicating face to face, in, in hopefully in a couple of months time, we want to be thinking about bringing what I would call a level eight energy. So level five is that you can walk across the road and not get run over. Level eight requires you to turn things up a little bit. And especially on camera, this is really, really important because the camera sucks energy out of your performance. And this is something I learned very early on in my career as an actor, that you have to understand the camera and understand your performance in relationship to that piece of equipment essentially and that if if you want to show up powerfully on screen you've got to be prepared to turn that energy up and the same is true face to face you know when you when you do get back into the room with with clients you've got to lead the energy of the communication so think about your presence Think about how you show up. Think about how you prepare and warm up. You know, I'm, I'm guessing that Lauren never just turned up and did her thing. She did a full blown warm up. She had a kind of whole routine that she was going through that got her onto the track. And we need to think about that as well, because you are not only an expert, you are a performer. You've got to be able to marry those two things. And they're absolutely skills that you can learn, but they are skills that you're going to have to work on. You're going to have to put the miles in to get comfortable doing these sorts of things. And for, for many people uh, in the finance world, you know, you're, you're, good at the, you're good at the detail, you're good at the numbers, uh, and the, the extroversion thing might not be your comfort zone. But I want you to believe that you can do it. You've just got to understand how to tweak your performance performance a little bit. Understand which bits you need to turn up and which bits you need to turn down. So that's my, my key lesson uh, for this episode. Think about your presence. Think about that level eight energy uh, and make sure that you're showing up powerfully, whether that's in person or on screen. Thank you very much, Dominic. I really appreciate what you just shared. I wanted to ask you, what do you recommend that one does to the actual doing of it? Is it good to maybe record yourself 
play a role with someone else? How would you recommend that one goes? Yeah, with? absolutely. Well, the, the first thing is, is warm up, you know, do, do something you know, off camera before we started the show. You know, I was, I was doing some of those things I was getting you guys to do. So that's going to naturally raise my energy levels. The other thing you may notice, I'm at a standing desk right now because I know that that helps me bring um, the energy. But as you say, Luis, the, the other thing to, to really think about is, is to um, get some feedback. And Zoom is a great tool for this because you can set yourself up a, a meeting you don't need to invite everyone anyone you click record and you deliver the the, the client presentation that you're going to deliver and then you can watch it back okay and once you get over the the horror of seeing yourself and hearing your voice and believe me you know i was a professional actor i've seen myself in the cinema i've seen myself in my living room it's horrific i want to hide on the sofa uh, and you know stay away from people but once you get over that you really can then start to build your performance. So do use those feedback tools to help you make more impact. Got it, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. My so pleasure. So we wanted to, uh, yeah, just, uh, Kate, thank you so much again. Uh, before we wrap up, I just wanted to say, I appreciate being here. Thank you to Next Gen Planners as well. And this has been great. I, I wish that uh, I had more time, right, to just stay on 24 hours. <laughs> this is amazing. So I'm definitely going to stay tuning in after this to see what else you got going on. Well, and, and that. that's, the, that's the incredible thing. Like I was saying, being on show 12 now, um, Adam Owen is staying on and producing every show for those 24 hours. So, you know, I've even wow. gotten messages from a few people that have said, oh, I'm debating, like, I kind of need to go to sleep, but I don't want to miss anything. So should I stay awake? And you know, they are recorded. So if people have missed any of the episodes, you will be able to go back and watch them. We've had so many incredible guests throughout this, so many great presenters, great segments. I'm so honored to be part of this Next Gen Commute and just really impressed by the team at Next Gen Planners, by those that are doing the charity challenges. Um, I think we've got Steve that's actually going to be wrapping up here in just a minute so we're going to hang on because that is absolutely worth celebrating him going what was it 121 miles for an iron man cycling challenge doing that over the last few years update on the money that we've raised for cf warriors in the uk 930 pounds and again that's only halfway through the day so we've still got 12 hours of the show left 12 and a half because technically there are 25 episodes. So it started at 8.30 a.m. in the UK and it's going to end at 8.30 a.m. Um, on Tuesday. And update on the stroke association total is 875 pounds. So please dig deep into those pockets. Steve will remind us of that one more time. The links are in the show notes below and then you can donate directly to the other charities. Send us a message. Like I said, I'm getting messages on LinkedIn and Twitter. So thank you to all of those that are taking this opportunity to give back, to bring the global community together. And while we wait just a few more minutes, um, Luis, why don't you share a little bit about how you wound up from Dominican Republic via New York, and now you're in this crazy city of Las Vegas. I know, yeah, well, I, my parents brought me from the Dominican Republic when I was 11 to New York City. I lived there for most of my adult life uh, for about 25 years. And then my wife switched careers, so we moved to Vegas so that she can finish her schooling. And I've been here ever since, and now California is next. <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep it moving, you know? as you see, but yeah, it was great living in New York and coming to a mostly Dominican community at first in Washington Heights, but then just being exposed to so many different kinds of people from so many different backgrounds. So like Lauren was saying, you really learn how not to judge the book by its cover because in New York City is like 8 million people plus, and you just get everybody from <laughs> everywhere. And it's just amazing. Like we're all Americans and we're all in this together. So. It's a beautiful thing. So I really appreciate the opportunity being here and I can't wait to do it next time. Now I feel bad that I see people, you know, on a bike for miles and climbing and I'm just sitting here next year. I'm going to have to do this from like a standing desk or something. <laughs> Well, we can all see Steve. He is coming into the final area. I wish we had like, I, there's got to be an app for that. I'd love to have a <laughs> cheering, cheering squad. I think yeah. we can all see him. We can all cheer Steve on. And oh, hang on. <laughs> we need a banner. 
Finish. Done? Okay. Woo! All right, Steve. Man, that sucks. <laughs> oh, that so sucks. Oh, dear me. But yeah, I tell you what, you guys definitely keep me keep me going. I uh, I gave up on Fat by Slim because you guys were much more much more motivational. Um, but yeah, that's it done. I suppose I should stop it now because my time's poor enough without adding extra extra hanging about time. So yeah, that's us all done. Um, thank you so much to everybody who has donated. Um, it has been well earned, people. I promise you, it's not. Uh, it's not been given away in vain. It's been properly earned, um, and that's by that's by all of us. The state that James was in this morning was uh, was impressive um, to keep to keep going like that. And if if you guys don't know, if you've not been to CrossFit, that tire will be seventy or eighty kilos. That's not just a big bag of air. Um, and we've done that kind of training before. He's just a big machine. He just keeps on going. Um, and uh, yeah, Jess is running up and down those stairs, and Andrew on the rowing and stuff like that. You know, people are properly burying themselves for your for your entertainment. So uh, the only fair trade is to pay for our pain. So thank you so much. Amazing, amazing charities, the Sea Aquarius and the Stroke Association, and obviously the American charities and stuff as well. You know, these are these are real things making a real difference to people. So Harry's here. He doesn't want to come on screen, but. He's usually not very shy, but he's got his top off and his swimming trunks on. So I think it's pretty clear where the direction of travel is. But thank you all very much for your support, for thank your encouragement, you. your nice words, your money. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all again. Incredible. Enjoy, Thanks, Steve. Enjoy the rest of the show. Unfortunately, I will not be staying with you for 24 hours. I suspect I will be asleep in about 30 minutes. <laughs> you have well more deserved. than earned that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. All the best. Have a great show. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. That is very well deserved. Very inspiring. I'm telling you, ne next year I'm going to be in a one of those uh, uh, mill, a treadmill desk or something. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Well, you look in good shape, Lewis. It'll be, be easy for you, mate. Thank you. I appreciate it. It means a lot <laughs> coming from you. Well, thank you all. That is it for our shows in the U.S. And our next show is uh, 2030 UK time. So we're heading to New Zealand where we will be chatting wow. with Paul, right? Paul Sewell. Uh, he's a CFP professional and director at the Financial Advice, Hogs Bay. And we will be joined by Gavin Simpson of Worthstone to hear about some social impact funds that are making waves globally. Back to you, Kate. Fantastic. Gracias, Luis. It's been great to have you on the show from our great city of Las Vegas. Looking forward to getting together in person for our first in-person happy hour in, what, five months now? Yes. Uh, so We'll be back in 15 minutes and I will be joined by regular UK host, Gabby Cotton Gambara. So we will see you then. Keep following those links, keep donating, helping us raise money for great organizations. And we'll see you back here in a few minutes. Bye for now.